Hello. As you know, a quadratic equation can have zero solutions, one solution, or two real solutions. Correct? Um, well, the formula, like if I write an equation y equals to ax square, let me write down that for you. Like y equals to ax square plus bx plus c. If you write this equation, this is a quadratic equation. Now, possibility of this equation to be equal to solutions we really mean by when we say 0 equals to what, right? What value of x gives us 0? So, whenever we normally say find solutions of this quadratic function or quadratic equation, we really mean that if y equals to 0 or f of, f of x equals to 0, then what is the value of x? Correct. So, when you solve for this kind of an equation, the possibility of getting the value of x is that you may get no value of x or you may get just one value of x or you may get two values of x depending on the discriminant part right as you remember here from this equation if I use uh, the formula to find the x value then x is equal to minus p plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac over 2a where a, b, c are these coefficients, right? a is coefficient, leading coefficient of x square, b is the coefficient of x and c is our constant term. Now, this thing in radical b square minus 4ac is called discriminant and we can denote it by letter d just for easy, you know, um, talk about it. So b, b square minus 4ac, if this is 0, in that case we get only one solution and the solution is minus b over 2a because plus minus 0 gives us only just this value. But in case b square minus 4ac is positive, so anything in the radical is positive, will give us two values, the conjugate values, plus and minus, right? So leading to two different real solutions of our quadratic function. But in case b square minus 4ac is negative, then under the radical we have a negative term. And you know square root of negative number is not defined in the domain of real numbers. So we don't have a real solution. Correct. So that leads to the number of solutions which we are talking about. So now let's look into our problem once again. The question here which we are dealing with today is Determine the values, values means there could be more than one value of k for 0, 1 or 2 real solutions, right? Now I will take some quadratic equations and then find out in those quadratic equations what values of k will give us these kinds of solutions, okay? So now let me write down some equations for you and let's take some examples, right? Let's take the example of, let's say, uh, we can write here as y equals to uh, 3x square minus 6x plus k. I'm trying to take examples which will give me easy values to work with. In your test, you may get to deal with some fractions and decimals and things like that. Don't be afraid of that you know, always you're not going to get such a simple function to work with, okay? So this is only for your, for your understanding and easy explanation for me, right? Now here, as you see, now we have a function we are writing now in the form of y equals to 3x squared minus 6x plus k, where a is how much? a is equals to 3, right? And b is equals to minus 6 and c is equals to k. a, b, c, just compare it with our standard equation, right? Quadratic equation in standard form is always given as ax square plus bx plus c, right? And this formula is also given in that those terms, a, b, c, these, this b is this b, and this a is this a, and c is this c, constant term, okay? Just remember, don't forget about two times a in the denominator, okay? Now, if this is my equation, then what is b square minus 4ac? 
So once you write down a, b and c values, the next step is what is b square minus 4ac equals to, right? Now b square is minus 6 whole square, right? So we said minus 6 whole square minus 4 times a is 3 and c is k. So this leads to 36 minus 12k, correct? Which I can write as, I can take 12 common, right? So I get 12, 3 minus k here, correct? Now, this is what we land with. Now, b square minus 4ac is equals to 12 times 3 minus k. Now, what we need to do is to figure out for what values of k will this discriminant, this b square minus 4ac is that part, correct? Do you get it? This part, inside our radical, okay, inside the square root. Now, if it is 0, we get 1 solution, right? And if it is positive, 2. And if it is negative then zero solutions so here we are trying to find out what this really should be right so can you tell me what values of k will make this equation zero well let's try to find it out so you know it is 12 times 3 minus k so if k is equals to 3 then this will be zero correct so if this is zero then how many solutions do i get I get just one solution, correct? That's true. Think if k is less than 3. So we say if k is less than 3, then this number will be like 2, 1, or 2.9, whatever, or even 0. We can test with some value, right? So if you plug in 0 here, you get 3 minus 0 is 3, and you get a positive number, right? So if it is positive, then how many solutions do we expect? we expect two solutions, correct? So we get two solutions. Now, if k is not less than 3 but greater than 3, so that's the third case, k could be either 3 or less than 3 or greater than 3, correct? It's always better to start with the zero value, right? Then you know where to go up and down. So k is greater than 3, test it out. If I make k as 4, then 3 minus 4 is negative 1, and negative 1 times 12 is negative 12. Therefore, b square minus 4ac becomes a negative number. So it is, if it is this, then it becomes negative. And if it becomes negative, then the number of solutions is 0. Do you get that part? Okay, let's do it again. So we started with an equation y equals to 3x squared minus 6x plus k, where a is 3, b is minus 6, and c is k. And to find the number of solutions, we check the value of b square minus 4ac and we reduced that term to this factor 12 times 3 minus x 3 minus k and then we try to find different values of k for which we could get this term as 0 positive or negative it's very evident that if i put 3 equals to x equals to 3 in that case what will be the value of b square minus 4ac b square minus 4ac will be 0 correct in that case, the number of solutions will be 1 because our discriminant will be 0, right? If I put k less than 3, then this will be positive. Is it okay? And because it is positive, we get 2 solutions for, from the radical, correct? Plus and minus of that value. But if it is greater than 3, so it should have been greater than 3 here. 4 was my test value, correct? So let me write greater than 3 here, okay? Greater than 3. I keep on making such mistakes. If k is greater than 3, test value you can use 4, it becomes negative, correct? So it's always good to review. It helps. And therefore, you have imaginary numbers, not real numbers, because square root of a negative is not real, correct? So the answer is, determine values of k for 0, 1, or 2 real solution, right? So you should write very clearly the real solution is that if k equals to 3, we get one solution. If k is less than 3, that means, less than 3 means from minus infinity to 3. Do you understand? That's the interval. For all those values, you'll get two solutions. And if k is more than 3, that means 3 to infinity, any value. And here, if k is equals to 3, then you get one solution. So that is our answer for this particular equation, right? Now, let me take another example for you 
where k is not in this position but in a different position okay now this is my equation this time i'll use the term function right earlier i didn't use the term function i was writing with y because many of the grade 10 students will be interested in this right and they have not been introduced to the concept of function and that's one reason why i keep going back from function to equation and equation to function because it helps both students students of grade 10 and 11 right so so we'll use both the terms at times i'm not trying to confuse you but i'm trying to give you an idea that both sometimes can be used in the same way right functions as you know have much deeper meaning okay right so we'll write this in the form of a function and we say let the function f of x is equals to kx square minus 2x plus k again for convenience purpose I've taken a very beautiful example which gives me such an easy values and numbers to work with <laughs> okay that's the whole idea I've really worked on these numbers to get some very simple numbers did you see how simple that was normally it may not be okay remember that now to find solutions of any equations, what do we do? We equate it to 0, right? So we said 0 equals to kx square minus 2x plus k, okay? Now, let me use a different ink here to do this work. Okay, so we'll do it in red. Now, in this case, what is the value of a for you? A is K in this case right and what is B equals to B is minus 2 and how about C C is also K for us right so right C equals to K correct so what is B square minus 4AC equals to so B square minus 4AC is equals to B is minus 2 so it's minus 2 square minus 4 times A is K and C is also K okay so we land with 4 minus 4K square good job and we can factor out 4. Do you see how easy it works out to be? Yes. 1 minus k square. Never can you get like this. Okay. <laughs> Correct. Now when you get an equation like this, then the whole idea is to find first. 1 is it? 0, right? You know, this could be 0 for what value of k? 1. Also minus 1. Don't forget that. Okay. When I equate 1 minus k square to 0, right, then k equals to square root of 1 with positive and negative sign. Do you see that? Okay. So let me do it in a, in a different way for you here. Let me plot it for you this time. Okay. 1 minus, I'm just plotting this value to find when this is positive or negative. We know this is positive. So positive times anything will be same sign, right? If it is negative, it will remain negative, this whole function. If it is positive, it remains positive. So we'll just consider that part. 1 minus k square. So minus means it. So you, uh, let me write this here because at times I've seen students, they, this is a discriminant part, right? So d is equals to, let me write this, minus k square plus 1. Does it make more sense to you? I think so. Minus means the parabola will go downwards and 1 is its vertex, right? Vertex is at 0, 1. So we have a parabola here which goes like this, right? like this correct and these two points here are plus and minus one correct so this is one these are my points so for we can see from here very clearly that during the region or in the interval of minus one to plus one this interval right what is the value of our discriminant is positive see correct but beyond it is negative because the curve goes below x-axis, right? This is your x-axis, correct? And that's a discriminant d, right? Minus k square plus 1. And therefore, you can write on your answer. What is your answer? The answer is for k equals to minus 1 and plus 1. How many real solutions do we have? How many? Just one, okay? So, the solution is we say if we write here, uh, okay, we say k equals to plus and minus 1 
what do we have number of solutions we'll say number of solutions here right real solutions we get one right if k is between so how will you write that if k is greater than minus one but less than one then how many solutions because here it is positive right so we get two solutions and how about k which is we'll say on this side right so less than minus one and if k is greater than one if we, these are my conditions then if k is on this side that is less than minus one and k is on this side greater than one then how many solutions do i have no solution because negative is under the x-axis. I purposely tried to write down here so that it's in your mind that k was negative, this discriminant was negative when k was beyond plus and minus 1. Correct? So everything from 1 to infinity or from minus infinity to minus 1 gave discriminant a negative value and therefore no solution for our given function kx square minus 2x plus k. Do you get it? Here also, you could have drawn and get an idea, right? For example, I can draw this here like this. I know I'm messing it up, but that's fine. 3 minus k. So 3 is your y-intercept and minus k is the slope, right? So your line will be something like this. <laughs> okay, now at what point is it 0? This is 0 at this point. And that point happens to be, you know what, 3, correct? And you see, if it is more than 3, discriminant is negative. And if it is less than 3, it is positive. Do you get an idea how to do these things? I think that's the best way to explain and I hope you get it. And there will be many problems. Don't worry yourself with simplicity or difficulty of the numbers, okay? If these k's... If this equation is not that fine and we get something else, you can again use quadratic formula to figure out what is what value of k will give you 0 and then test out the other values, right? It will help you to do the solution, okay? In case there is a difficulty and you're not getting any point or you have a problem which can't be solved easily, send it to me. I can give you a good and easy solution to it. Thanks a lot for your help. Thank you.